Denver. Um, oh, directed by Ben Zach, sorry. Um, Waiting is about that period um, of your life in your early 20s where you're just kind of, you have no idea what the hell is going on and you're just trying to figure stuff out. Um, it's about Peter Fisher who is failing at pretty much everything in his life and he decides to take a trip to the city and change things for himself and it's about the people he meets there. Waiting by Kyle Peters and Kayla Shimizu. Music and lyrics by Shakar Ziv. <laughs> After being rejected by ten separate graduate programs and walking in on a wild swingers party hosted by his parents, our hero, Peter Fisher, sits drinking in a bar with his buddy Mike a mellow, bearded musician. And then I saw my mom. Oh, this is a crisis. You know, me not getting laid in three months is a crisis. This is an issue. Yeah, I've been rejected by every graduate program in America. You're clearly exaggerating. Ten graduate programs. Hey, Pete, how do we feel about losing the whole My Life is Awful lot? Feel good about it? What? I love you, Pete, but you can be a little bitch sometimes. Your parents are swingers. You suck at college. <laughs> Try something else. Stop waiting. What is this, tough love or some shit? That's exactly what it is. Stop bringing me down. Hell, stop bringing yourself down. Try depressing. <laughs> what if I can't? Interior, Greyhound bus, night. Peter sits looking out the window of the Greyhound bus. As it drives through his ho-hum town, he begins to whistle. Excerpt 2 
Upon his arrival in the big city, Peter is promptly assaulted and mugged, leaving him penniless and sporting a broken nose. He makes his way to the only place that seems to make sense to him. Interior Mall. <laughs> Peter walks through a crowded Irving shopping gallery, his nose bandaged, the wonders of capitalism surround him. Peter passes Elvino's restaurant and looks in. It's a cheap-looking Italian place, reeking of inauthenticity and endless breadstick specials. Peter thinks about going in, but then, suddenly, a waiter, 20s, storms out of Elvino's. He's chased by an assistant manager, Darla, 25, a French bulldog of a woman. <laughs> Peter watches as Darla catches up to the waiter. Listen up, Samuel. You may think this is over, but just you know something, all right, I don't forget. They called me the elf in college. God, you are a disgrace. <laughs> <laughs> Keep walking. You'll regret it. I am the restaurant industry in this town. You won't work again. I'm going to L.A. And I'm going to be an actor. And you are going to get fat and bored. <laughs> the waiter spins on his heels and walks out of the mall. Darla is breathing heavily, adrenaline still coursing through her. She yells after Samuel. I'm a woman! Women don't typically get bald! Samuel's already gone. Peter stands by watching. He approaches Darla slowly. One waiter down this evening? One piece of unreliable shit down this evening. <laughs> but yes. Just so happens, I'm looking for a job. I can start right now. Have you worked in this industry before? Interior, Ilvino, night. Peter follows Darla through the restaurant to the walk-in freezer in the back. She opens the door to find Chris, 25, a frat boy who wants to go back inhaling the compressed air out of whipped cream cake. <laughs> Chris! <laughs> what I tell you about the whippets? That they're awesome? Yeah, but no. What's the other thing I told you about the whippets? That I shouldn't do them on the clock. And? And that I shouldn't use the restaurant supply of whipped cream can to get high. Good boy. <laughs> this is Peter. You'll be training him as our new server. Don't. Pedro, welcome to Il Vino. It's just like family here, except we all hate each other. <laughs> so kind of like my family. <laughs> I like this kid. I like him a lot. <laughs> Chris invites Peter back to his place to party with Chris's group of, friend, of quirky friends. Cole, Tanya, Elizabeth, and Cameron. After some drinking and some reckless dancing, Peter needs to change clothes. Chris offers him a sweater that he has lying around. Unfortunately, the sweater belonged to Cameron's dead fiance, Anders. I take it this wasn't your sweater. Listen, Pete, this was Anders' room. Anders was... Anders was fucking great. He and Cameron were going to get married, but... You know, bad shit happens to everyone, and we all mourn, and it's time, time for her, time for us. Man. Yeah, so now you know. Peter exits the bedroom, holding the sweater. Cameron is the only one left in the living room. Peter sits next to her cautiously. A brief, awkward silence ensues. You know, you can sleep in the bedroom if it's too late to go home. I'll take the couch. Thanks, but no. I can't really imagine sleeping in there. Oh, yeah, yeah. My mom used to say that uh, white wine and baking powder would get red wine stains out. Let's try it. Uh, hit a minute. Listen, I know it's just a shirt and everything. You don't have to explain. Uh, his clothes don't even smell like him anymore. It's okay to still want them, too. I'm Peter, by the way. I'm Cameron. Cameron Kidd. Eventful first night for you. <laughs> I've, I've had worse. I recently found out my parents allow their friends to have orgies in my childhood. <laughs> You're not serious. I'm totally, totally serious. Right in front of my Lily trophies and action figures. Scandalous. 
<laughs> Listen, um, I just want everything to be okay. I don't want things to be weird because of me. It's not you. Not at all. It's just everything lately. I just don't get it.